Hey kids, this is Dr. W. Today we will be learning about how to balance equations. This video is the second part of this series on chemical equations. If you haven't seen my first video on writing skeleton equations, be sure and check that out. In this video, I will teach you how to go from a skeleton chemical equation to a balanced chemical equation. First, let's remind ourselves what a word equation is because it is usually where we will start from. I show here the word equation for the infamous reaction that brought the Hindenburg down. Hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen in a quite spectacular fashion to produce water. Now, if we want to show this reaction as a skeleton equation, we show hydrogen as H2, oxygen as O2, and water as H2O. Don't forget that we, that we represent the state of each reactant as a subscript in the parentheses. H2 is a gas, O2 is a gas, and H2O is a gas at the temperature at which the Hindenburg burned. Even though the skeleton equation tells us which substances are involved in the reaction, it still does not give the whole picture of the reaction. Do you remember John Dalton, dead guy, inventor of chemistry? Well, he stated that atoms are neither created nor destroyed over the course of a chemical reaction. Let's count the numbers of atoms on each side of this equation. On the left side of our skeleton equation, we have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. This comes from the fact that we have one diatomic hydrogen molecule and one diatomic oxygen molecule. On the right side, we have one water molecule that has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Clearly, this reaction is not following Mr. Dalton's rule. As written, we are actually destroying an oxygen atom. In order to even out the numbers of atoms on each side of the equation, we need to change the coefficients within the equation. Coefficients are small whole numbers that are placed in front of formulas to change the total number of atoms. In H2O, we have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. If we put a 2 in as coefficient in front of the formula, we will double the number of each atom present. There will now be four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. Sometimes in life we need to make things more complicated before they can get simpler. If we look back at our original equation, we see that we have one less oxygen on the right as we do on the left. To fix this, we put a 2 in as the coefficient on the right side of the equation. Now, we have evened out the number of oxygens, but now we have four hydrogens on the right and only two on the left. Therefore, we must go back and put a 2 in front of the hydrogen gas formula. This brings the number of hydrogen atoms on the left up to four, and our equation appears to be balanced. Note that it is convention not to write the one in front of the molecules if we only have one of them. Here's the step-by-step -step guide to balancing equations. First, count the number of atoms of each element on each side. If there are polyatomic ions, and they are on each side of the formula, treat them as one unit instead of breaking them down to their constituent elements. Secondly, balance each element one at a time by changing the coefficients. Do not change subscripts. Remember, if the coefficient is 1, you don't have to write it. Lastly, make sure all of the coefficients are the lowest whole number ratio. For example, if the coefficients for the equation end up being 4, 6, and 4, you can simplify them down to 2, 3, and 2. Think you got it? Let's try one for practice. This is a double replacement reaction involving silver nitrate and hydrogen sulfide. First, let's count how many silver atoms we have on each side. On the left, we have 1. On the right, we have 2, due to the subscript in AG2S. That means we have to put a 2 in as the coefficient in front of the silver nitrate. Now we have two silver atoms on each side. Next, let's take a look at the number of nitrates, or NO3. On the right, we have 2. Remember, we put the 2 there as the coefficient. On the left, we only have 1. Let's put a 2 in as the coefficient in front of the HNO3 on the right. Now we have two nitrates on each side. Next, let's look at sulfur. 
It appears that we have one sulfur on each side, therefore we don't have to change any coefficients for sulfur. Lastly, let's look at our hydrogen atoms. On the right, we have two, and on the left we have two. Congratulations! Our equation appears to be balanced. Now try a few on your own with Moodle. See you later!